minimum wage is going down. No, it actually just went up. What does that mean? Well, let's just say real minimum wage might go down while nominal minimum wage goes up. We're going to explain that with an example of the restaurant business, and we're going to do it right now. So there's a politicized issue with minimum wage, and a lot of people think that minimum wage earners should get more money, minimum wage should be mandatorily raised, and a lot of other people say that's just going to make things more expensive, which makes sense, right? Restaurants or whatever company it is are going to have to pay their earners more money. It's going to cause them to have to raise the price of things to stay in business. Well, another option is to cut costs, right? Here's an article right here. You have Yahoo Finance, McDonald's 18 Big Mac meal goes viral again as fast food minimum wage hiked to $20, triggers fears of skyrocketing prices and layoffs, leaving people questioning questioning maybe this went up way too fast. When you have prices going up to $18 or $19, there are those who argue that's not because of minimum wage. There are those who do. It's a complex picture, and it's not as simple as comparing the price of one product to another. There are loss leaders. There are entire matrices of data that would go into why prices are at a certain level, but I can say McDonald's has had record profits this year. So real quick, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more of this content. So the idea here is that in California, minimum wage is $16 dollars going up to 20 and that might be why we're seeing much higher prices on Big Macs. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. One thing that is going to happen though, and has already started happening for 20 years, is automation because that cuts costs. Rather than raising the price of your goods, you can find a way to cut costs. And Motley Fool back in 2017 had a really good article about this and the interviewee says that of course the labor costs are about 20 to 25 percent of these chains and these chains have single digit margins very often. So when you hike labor costs by 25 percent, your margins are going to go down significantly, right? And in this case, Klein basically says, the interviewee here, he says that really automation's been around for a while and having like an order kiosk or a machine that pours your Coke for you or the ability to order over your phone, things like that has only brought more employees in because more employees actually have to be there to handle the hike in business that has gone on with the ease in ordering and also some more efficiency in cooking. So at this point, automation has only brought more people. But he goes on to say that in the future, that's going to change. Now, right now, to have machines that do the big work, say delivering the food, making the food, they're too expensive. Restaurants cannot afford them. The amount of money they would save in wages doesn't make any sense when you have to buy a million dollar machine or a $4 million machine or even a $200,000 machine. So for now, things are going to be there, but in the future, it may be that we lose some workers to machines, but it's not happening anytime soon, at least not for five or 10 years, according to some people. That being the case, we're going to actually take a look at this article that came out and it may shed a little bit of a light on how costs can affect restaurant brands and how that might affect the stock price. So you have restaurant brands beefs up Burger King in US turnaround with 1 billion Carol's deal. And that's on Reuters. And so basically, Carol's operates more than 1,000 Burger King restaurants and 60 Popeye restaurant outlets. Also in this article, it says the company will invest about $500 million to modernize 600 restaurants it acquires from Carol's and more than double the current pace of remodeling franchise outlets. An article found on Wikipedia talks about how this modernization may occur and automation is part of the strategy. However, that automation seems to be limited to more kiosks, which is more order kiosks, dedicated pickup areas for mobile app orders, which mobile app orders is the automation, and food ordering platforms, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and to improve drive through service. That may or may not be automation. So you're talking about a fair amount of money, and they're going to do these overhauls at about twice the normal pace. So there is a bit of investment. And it may be that these restaurants were liability, and Carol sold off a liability, and QSR brought that on, right? So let's take a look at the stock price. QSR, on a higher time, if we're going to look at the weekly, okay? So we're going to look at a chart where each one of these candles you see on the screen is a week's worth of price action. Basically, price from October until now went up about 30 some odd percent. Went from 60-ish to 80-ish dollars, right? But now we're seeing price come down a fair amount for the quick. Well, this could be for technical reasons. This is at a prior high. And on a chart, you'll see price move at the same kind of area where it moved before. You'll see price turn around at these pivot points. So is this a technical thing? Mm. It could be at least in part, but let's take a look at the actual stock on a lower time frame. Let's look at today's price action alone. This article came out today and this drop was today and it was very hard and it was very fast. It was actually at the market open. There's a good chance that this drop had to do with that announcement, but is it to do with the automation? Maybe what I think is that there's what is called arbitrage game. So I think what's happened is Carol's sold off a liability and restaurant brands bought the liability. So restaurants brands' value may take a very temporary hit, but I think it's more about buying one and selling to the other. Let's say you have a, a corner where you can buy trinkets and then you have a, two blocks away another corner where you can buy 
buy trinkets and sell. You can buy and sell to both corners. One corner has expensive trinkets and the same trinkets are cheaper at another corner. So you could buy on one corner for $5 and sell them for $8 on the other corner. Well, eventually that first corner that you buy from is going to start charging you more. And then the corner that you sell to is going to start paying less because of supply and demand. And these things are going to even out. And this is what we're seeing, I think, between QSR and Carol's, which the ticker is T-A-S-T. -T. And if you just look at the price, Carol's being the orange line here, it happened at the exact same time as QSR dumped down. So I'm pretty sure that arbitrage is what matters here. Now, if I were to take some long-term guesses at where QSR might go, we'll do that right now. And we'll go to the weekly chart again. And I'm going to take some lower targets and higher targets that might happen this year. And future years are going to be hard to determine because the economic landscape can change quite a bit over, say, a 10-year period. But on a higher time frame, the higher, farther targets I would take are based on what are called Fibonacci extensions, right? And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, come to algofactor.tech and we will explain to you how these work and how to use them. I would be looking at maybe a $100 QSR and I might take some profit out at $86. I think short term price may actually go down a bit, possibly to maybe $69, $70 might be a good spot. Maybe lower, might be down to like 65, but I might buy there and then look to hold on to it through maybe 2025 or longer. Could take years, but we might see maybe a double in price or close to it. Now, if we don't see that strong of a move up, right? And this is all based on things like being normal in the economy, not too many things changing. If you do see an economic hardship, then of course this might be all out the window. But let's just say we see a move up, but it's not as strong and uh, it might be just because things are moving more slowly. I might consider some targets using that same Fibonacci extension technology or tool, if you will, 83 and $89. Those are decent places where I might look to sell. So that's the look at the stock. That's an explanation of more supply and demand, I think, than automation. But at least we get to talk a little bit about the automation. I hope this helps. Now let's go back to our original point about how nominal minimum wage may be going up while real minimum wage will be going down. Nominal minimum wage is the actual minimum wage that you see on the paycheck. It'll be at $20 in California as of April, so on and so forth. Real minimum wage is going to be a couple of things. It'll be relevant or relative to prices of goods. So for example, if your minimum wage goes up by 5% and goods and services go up by 10%, then your real minimum wage actually went down at that point. And furthermore, if minimum wage gets hiked too high and companies have to let all of their people go, then there will be no jobs. And effectively, minimum wage is zero because there is no wage. So this is the entire point to the introduction originally. If you like what we're doing over here, come over to www.algofactory.tech. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell on the YouTube, and we will catch you on the flip side. All right, hope you enjoyed the show. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. On the screen there, you can see our website, algofactory.tech. Accept that QR code to take it straight there. I'm also very active on X. That's algo underscore factory 777. We got TikTok and Rumble. In the meantime, we hope to see you over at the website. Come on over, trade your job, upgrade your life. We'll see you there.